I'm back. Japan was amazing, but we've got a lot of news to cover today, so let's just jump straight in. First up, Trevor Henry, affectionately known as Quickshot, has been let go from Riot Games and subsequently League of Legends casting. One of the longest standing and well performing casters over his 11 year long career with Riot Games, this came as a shock to the wider community. Quickshot addressed his release in this tweet on your screen and also the video he linked. The way he phrases things in this video saying he's sad and unsure of the future makes me think he wasn't yet ready to leave League, so I wonder what reason Riot had to let him go. Here is a small snippet from his now privated video talking about his plans for the future. Where am I now? Well, uh, I don't have a day job and I don't actually know what the future is going to hold. I'm actively figuring that out and, and going to be putting steps towards working with other event organizers, um, maybe talking to publishers, uh, maybe talking to other competitive esports. Okay, I'm going to try my hand at some streaming as well, a little bit, uh, maybe content creation. Podcasts could be on the horizon as well. The truth is that I have a lot of freedom now and a lot of flexibility to create my own future, to create my own destiny. Moving on, Riot has made a really weird change. As per Spiderax on Twitter, a new policy has been placed stating rioters are no longer allowed to monetize their streams when they're streaming Riot games. Like, why? It just makes no sense to me. The writers that do stream bring amazing insight into things the community want to know or learn about, such as August with his Champion Insight streams. When Briar was about to be released, he would run around in custom games with viewers, playing the new champion, giving super interesting insight into developer decisions, builds, why Riot chose this or that, things that would have been or could be, and just answering questions about gameplay, identity, or design. This type of content is available literally nowhere. Like, no one knows this stuff other than a professional who actually worked on the champion and thus was invaluable to the community wanting to connect more with that type of content or information. Another one this affects as well is Mordog, basically the riot face of TFT. It's just weird to me that Riot want to punish writers for showing external commitment to the game, but to be clear, they can still earn money by streaming other games. I have read a few things about possible causation for this change, such as to possibly discourage writers streaming. User Firewall245 made a great point here saying, this move here could also be designed to discourage writers from streaming as a perceived representative of the company. You might think it's good advertisement, but it's not. The people who watch these streams are already in the Riot ecosystem. The only thing it does is open the door for another PR nightmare, which I guess this makes the most sense. If a writer was to say the wrong thing on stream, which is obviously live on the internet and can't be corrected or edited out, it can possibly expose the company. But I don't get why they just don't go and add an employment clause about not talking about the game outside of official channels or something like that. I'm not saying I want that or that it's better, it just seems an odd way to try and minimize exposure. For viewers that care about these writers and the content they make just makes me feel kind of bitter. But to be clear, this isn't a right specific thing. This is actually very common in professional practice to try and minimize exposure in this way. But game development is different from, for example, an Apple phone or a Nike shoe. There was a clip of Flox addressing this on stream. I assume actually giving a reason or insight, but it's since been deleted and there's no mirror to my knowledge. I couldn't find one anyway. Either way, I always wanna know what you guys think of the Riot imposed policy. And just before we jump into the main topic of today, a quick word from our latest sponsor, Opera GX. For a long time, browsers have been huge consumers of your PC power and internet bandwidth. I still remember the days of having to tab out while I was streaming just to close Chrome because my OBS and game would lag if I had my browser open while streaming. To combat this, the five heads over at Opera cooked up GX Control, a panel that allows you to allocate a certain amount of CPU, RAM and internet bandwidth to your browser so it doesn't get in the way of streaming or in-game performance. Alongside this, Opera GX has all your messaging services embedded in the sidebar, seamlessly allowing you to communicate to your friends or teammates with minimal alt tabbing. I also really love the dark default neon theme, but if it's not your thing, Opera's GX mods have got you covered. With GX mods, you can change the browser to be themed after your favorite league champion, your favorite game, or even your favorite waifu, and that's not even scratching the surface with GX mods. They even let you change your browser sounds, such as when you type, open and close tabs, or add your own background music. And one of their newest features is ARIA, Opera GX's own AI, and you can even enable other AI services like ChatGPT or ChatSonic right in the toolbar for ease of use. To give all of this a go yourself, check out the link in the description and download Opera GX today. Up next is kind of the main topic mixed with some other info, so bear with me. Skarna's rework has finally been unveiled. Holy shit, that took a long time. In case you haven't seen it, I'm going to quickly run over his abilities here with my gameplay interpretations too. The backing footage is from Vanderil. I'll link his video below. Skarna's new passive is Quaking. 
essentially all his damage sources just give a dot to the target. Nothing really special, just be aware when fighting him, the dot may end up doing more damage than you initially thought. His Q is Shattered Earth. He takes a chunk of ground out, which empowers his next three autos with more attack speed, 25 more range, and bonus physical damage. It also gives his autos AoE. This can either be recast, or he'll automatically throw the rock after the third auto, slowing the target by 40% for 1.25 seconds. His W is Seismic Bastion. He just hits the ground to grant himself a shield based on his max health. This slam also slows surrounding enemies by 30%, scaling to 50% for one second, meaning he's already got two very reliable CC sources. His E is Ishtal Impact, which is a really interesting ability. Skarna charges at his cursor for 2.75 seconds, during which time he gains slow immunity, becomes ghosted, ignores terrain, and has unobstructed vision for the surrounding 650 units. This ability is said to feel like a slower Scion ult to control. With the charge, Skarna can collide with an enemy or monster, suppressing them and attaching them to him. If the charge collides with terrain after an enemy has been grabbed, it will stun them for 1.5 seconds and lower the cooldown by 35%. This charge can also be cancelled by CC, so if he's trying to escape over a wall or something, just stun him. Skarna's ult is his old ult, Impale on Steroids. It has a cast time of 0.75 seconds in which he can't be displaced, meaning good timing can avoid CC and can grab up to three enemies, but it is a skill shot unlike his old one, so it can be flashed or dodged. The splash arts comparison by user Arouch the Queen are also being shown on the screen right now. There are some subtle differences in some of the newer ones, like adding his three stingers instead of one, but overall, I have to say I'm pretty happy with this design. I feel like this design's definitely a lot cooler, but I think it lacks a little bit of character. Could be because of how small his head is and the fact he lacks expression, I guess, but I'm glad Riot stuck with a monster champion and didn't try QTM up. I also feel like he retains a lot of his gameplay identity and fulfills the same role, so Skarna main should feel right at home playing him. With Skarna's rework came a skin revamp as well, but this opened an old wound that we as a community had mostly forgotten, and it directly relates to the value of consumer money when we purchase skins. Last year, we saw the removal of the custom recall animations moving forward between Zaya and Rakan, and this was a huge controversy. If you look up basically anything to do with Zaya and Rakan not being joint or not having custom animations on the subreddit, you'll be met with thousands on thousands of upvotes. There was a lot of speculation why this happened, from X champion is more popular than Y, so they'll release more of X because it sells more to just pure laziness. Personally, I think it's probably just due to the amount it costs to create a custom animation just isn't worth it for Riot, as it's usually about money, but that's my guess. I don't ever think it comes down to laziness or lack of care, the Riot art team is amazing. It's just something not being worth it in terms of return for the company. Anyway, I've digressed. This relates back to Skarna because in his feedback thread, the top comment was people asking where his custom Guardian of the Sands recall had gone. Before I continue, just to give you guys context on what I'm talking about, I'm going to play the old Guardian of the Sands recall animation followed by the new one, followed by the new base one. People assume this would be fixed upon his release because maybe the reason they actually spent money on the skin in the first place was because they liked the recall animation, but when it was released, Guardian of the Sands recall was the same as base but with a little bit of sand sprinkled on top. Also, with another bit of digression, I think his base recall is my least favourite part of the update. Like, I don't really understand what he's doing, he's just shaking his stingers at the camera. Uh, anyway, this might seem like a small issue, but it's more of a reflection of the company's approach to skins at the moment, and the community was very vocal about it. The most upvoted post almost three weeks ago was about the decreased quality of skins, and a lot of points user Bubblegum brings up in this post about the Skarna skins resonate with the skin quality post. There was also some points made about it not getting a custom recall because it's of an older pricing tier, the 975 RP skins, but if this was the case, a lot of inconsistencies arise. For example, basically anything Bubblegum covered here. It just seems odd to me to be taking something away at this stage in the game instead of adding it back in or reworking it because people have already spent money on it. Either way, as always, everything is linked in the description and be sure to let me know your opinion in the comments below on the issue and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!